Seaway Valley town that I will not make any uh, jokes about. It's a lovely town, Cornwall, all the way from Cornwall up to 138 tonight. The very funny Dan Allaire, everyone! Yeah. Yeah. All the way from Cornwall, which means nobody's happier to be here than me. <laughs> And being from Cornwall, I apparently am going to slip something in Lisa's drink and bring her home with me later when she's not looking. Right, Lisa? Uh, so when I do shows on the road and my wife doesn't come with me, she always tells me the same three words, kick some ass. It's always the same three words, kick some ass. I get that text message like clockwork every show I do. Last weekend, Friday night, I'm doing a weekend in Kingston, and I'm staying overnight. And she texts me right before the show and it says, lick some ass. And I was like, oh my God, was this an unfortunate autocorrect? Or did I just get a hall pass? <laughs> Wasn't quite sure on that one. Uh, back in Cornwall, uh, I actually do a morning radio program on a little station called Boom 1019. And when I tell people that, they're always like, oh dude, I couldn't do that, man. How do you do that without swearing on the air? It's pretty easy. I'm a fucking professional. That's how I can do it without swearing. There aren't a lot of jobs in the world that condone or endorse cursing, right? Can you imagine tomorrow morning on your way to work, pulling into Tim Hortons? Welcome to Tim Hortons. Can I take your fucking order? <laughs> oh, shit. Um, duck roast with two fucking cream? Is that what we're doing here this morning? And ten goddamn Timbits. Sir, it's camp day today, and for an extra $2, you can help send one of those little fuckers to camp. <laughs> well, every little fucker deserves a break. Put me down for 10 bucks. <laughs> and at the station now, no one is allowed into the building to claim prizes, and we have to have people sign waivers, so now we have to ask email addresses. You ever want to get to know somebody? Ask them their email address. <laughs> Especially when they're not astute enough to update them anymore, right? Hey, Rick, just going to need that email from you. He's like, yeah, it's a bud underscore 420 at yahoo.ca. <laughs> Yahoo, you've been fucking smoking the gang for a long time, eh, Rick? Or, you know, that sometimes they just own it. They just don't care. John, just need that email. Yeah, it's a pussking17 at yahoo.com. <laughs> John, was that pussking17? Yes, it was. So we know there's at least 16 other Puss Kings out there. I don't know who the current reigning Puss King champion is or what number that is. But women aren't any better, but they're a little bit more shy about things. Rhonda, congrats, I just need that email. She's like, oh, my email. Um, and Rhonda's gonna try and fool me because she'll spell it for me, but she'll screw up the kings to try and mess me up. She saw that email, eh? Um, it's P-E-N-I-S-H-U. N T E R69 at gmail.com. Rhonda, was that Penis Hunter 69? <laughs> yeah, yes, it was. I'm like, well, I'm definitely going to need your phone number now. <laughs> and you just won something we don't normally give away. Woo! Uh, so, my brother's a 37 year old that likes to speak language he doesn't comprehend. We all know somebody like that, eh? They use big words to appear more intelligent than they are. But you know that if you were to call them out on it, they couldn't fucking explain what it is. Let me give you an example. He's in the car with his wife, and they hit a bump, and he chokes on his Tim Hortons coffee. And you know when you choke on something and someone says, are you okay? What do you say? It went down the wrong hole. Uh, well, if you're not a doctor, we don't know what fucking hole that is, what it's called. So my brother, trying to flex his big brain, says to his wife, oh, I'm fine. It just went down my fallopian tube. Your fallopian tube. Dude, you're 37 years old. You've had kids. You should know where the goddamn fallopian tube is. Yes. It's A, not here. It's here. And B, you don't fucking have one, moron. Anyway, that's my brother. So during the pandemic, I had too much time on my hands and I started to think about how angry I was at new fathers that get to have diaper parties because I didn't have those. They didn't exist when I was younger and had my kids. If you've never heard of a diaper party, when a guy is expecting, not like pregnant or anything, when a guy's about to become a dad because the mom gets the baby shower, guys decided to have a party, and you'd show up with a box of diapers and get fucking hammered. It's a bachelor party with no strippers. I didn't get one of those. So now I'm pissed. 
But, like, guys love diaper parties, but have you ever met a woman who's pumped up about going to a baby shower? Fuck no, they're so boring, right? The guest of honor can't drink, number one. And you're playing stupid games, like guess the flavor of the baby food, and they, like, melt chocolate bars and diapers, and you gotta smell them and taste them, try and figure out what it is, you get the nutty one, it's not fun. They bob for nipples. Okay, they don't bob for nipples, that's what I would want them to do if I was actually at one of these. So I was thinking, maybe they should change the thing, they should just go back to the drawing board, and instead have the party for the mom six months later, because now she can drink and celebrate, right? She can have fun too. And then you change the name from baby shower to like the JJ party. Because, you know, it's all healed up. Or or if she had a C section, maybe you have it maybe you call it a pinata party. And then the, the games get kicked up as well, right? They're like, oh my god, Cindy's on her fourth margarita. Put your money in the pot. How far can she squirt her breath mouth? Like that's what we're playing now. Those are the games I want to see played at these things. Then I might want to go to one of these things. Now, with all the stuff happening with COVID-19 and the government telling us a bunch of stuff, the one place that they're giving advice where they just overstep, in my opinion, is the bedroom, right? They're giving us all this advice. And Dr. Tan last week was like, the safest way to have sex during the pandemic is with yourself. I'm like, it's safe to jerk off now? My mom used to tell me I'd go blind when I did that. And I thought she was right, because these are pretty strong prescriptions, so I don't know who to believe. My mom or Teresa Tam, I'm a little bit confused. But then let me bring you out to BC, where the Center for Disease Control there came out with all these rules and regulations, and my favorite one was like, when you're having casual sex in a pandemic, when available, Try to use a barrier, a.k.a. glory hole. This is a government weapon. I'm like, who the fuck's running the CDC out in BC? Ron, Jeremy, and Peter North are the fucking, they're the executive directors out there now, apparently. And it's like, A, so ladies, if I hear whispering, right? So if you don't know what a glory hole is, and you're with a guy, ask him. And if he goes, I don't know, he's fucking lying to you. Because he's seen all the videos, for sure. And so this is, a, this is a funny thing for me, but I'm like, who the hell has a glory hole at home? <laughs> and if you do, please high five me on your way out tonight because that's fucking amazing. And the thing about glory holes, and if you're sitting there going, geez, that kind of sounds fun and kinky, maybe we should do something. I've got a DIY project. I'm gonna leave you with a DIY project. Everyone's into home improvement, right? We're all stuck at home. Instant glory hole. Make sure that your partner is like freshening up or whatever, and when he or she is no longer in the room, just take the doorknob off the bedroom door. <laughs> Bam! Instant glory hole. I get it. Thank you very much. Where I did my first show. I'm kidding. I'm kidding.